G'day fans, and we're back talking about Star Trek Discovery. Oh my God, stuff's happening. How cool is this? It's Dags and MPS with you today. We're talking about Unification Part 3. Now, of course, if you're a brand new Star Trek fan, you'd be going, what happened to Part 1 and 2? But for that, you've got to go back to way back in the 1990s for good old Star Trek, the next generation, to find out what was going on with that. But first things first, MPS, tell me, off the top of your head, mate, what did you think of Unification Part 3? Wow, that's all I can say. You know, normally I write a massive amount of notes and I'm jotting there and I get bored and I check my phone during the episodes, but I've got to say this one was one of those ones where I was stuck. I was watching it because it just was awesome and we'll get into some of the details coming soon. Um, I really liked that. Even like the very first frame, I think it was, there was no robots this time on the ship. This time we got to see the nice Discovery logo with the United Federation of Planets. They're all part of the big happy family now. And it was all very good and exciting. And of course, we start off with good old Booker and, and his ship, which we find out later on actually fills up the entire shuttle bay of uh, the Discovery. So you reckon that sort of uh, uh, overstayed its welcome a little bit. Um, but I did actually like the fact that he starts off the whole space. I thought he was going to say space, the final frontier, but he's talking about how busy going out into space and Michael's a bit like disconnected from everybody. And I actually thought that was actually a very, very groovy. What do you reckon? It's interesting to see how Discovery are doing this with having conversations between just two people nowadays. So there was a bunch of these during the episode and that was one of them. And then she goes back to the ship later on and has a chat with him about stuff, you know, grudges there, which is always good to see. He's kind of like the official, uh, unofficial mascot of Discovery, I think, because, you know, there's nothing like holding a grudge. Ha ha. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, that was, that was good, but it didn't capture me until um, Tilly's talk with, with Michael, yeah. you know, Tilly seems to be growing up, not just, you know, not physically, but, um, emotionally and mentally, you know, and then later on she has a bit of a chat with Saru and that seems to be uh, a, a bit of a turning point in her life. Yeah, well, it's very funny. A few fans have sort of discussed that and it's uh, about Tilly being promoted to the acting first officer. So it is acting, not, it's not official and that's all fine. And a few people have said, well, there could have been other people who they uh, they could have picked in. Or Saru could have picked instead, or a bit more like likely to take the job. But it was a very very good sequence. It was really really well done. It's not like she goes, oh yeah yeah yeah. She had a lot of concerns and issues with it, and and, and the fact that she got the support from the crew. Um, some people are sort of trying to ascertain as to what it's kind of meaning. Is it's a sort of a subtle way of saying, well, Tilly's going to get kicked upstairs. Therefore, Adira is going to have a bit more of an interaction with Stamets, which is a whole thing with the spore drive. Who knows? Uh, and whether it's leading into something else, or they're setting her up for failure. I don't know make of that what you will but the whole the way it was done uh yeah it was really 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 well done and uh, i did like the idea that uh, they got the whole crew and they're all going uh was it say yes that's right and say michael yes. walks in later and says oh, i did i miss the say yes moment so the way it was done was really really good yeah absolutely look there was probably another option because uh who's the i can't remember her name the blonde uh one that oh, Saru yeah. seems to leave in charge she, yep. she was like my first choice if he had picked anyone for first officer that would have been my choice because she's already on the bridge. She knows what's yeah. going on. But I think it's because Tilly's got that mental um, moral compass. You know, and we saw that last week where she said to to him, to Saru, look, you know, I love Michael, but she screwed up and you've got to tell the Admiral what everything that went on. And I think that's where it's probably come from more than anything else. Uh, the say yes moment, that was kind of cute. And I like the, um, the fact that they tried to use the, the cone of silence method of, her and Paul in in the um the yeah. spore chamber, but you know they knock on the window, and go, well I need to know this. He goes, well just go <laughs> off and do that, and it's like, yeah, it's not really you know silence at all. So, but again, it was another one of those two person conversations, which I think we're starting to see a lot more of in this series. Yeah. Uh, so we got to see some really, really cool stuff at the start. We've got Admiral Vance, we've got more holographic floors, floors that just appear out of absolute nowhere, which you got a bit when you sort of see it in action is like, and oh, that's actually quite a, kind of cool. You just hope to hope that there's no like computer crash or a blue screen of death and suddenly your floor disappears and you're falling. Ah! <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's a workplace incident. You're not going to get compensation on. Um, but the uh, biggest thing, of course, is we finally got into burn related stuff. So it's like we've been waiting all season to sort of get into some really nifty action. And, of course, we find out that Vulcan has been renamed to Navarre. Now, of course, me being an absolute nerd, I thought, hang on, 
this reminds me of Star Wars The Mandalorian, where they're on Navarro last week. And I thought, oh, this this whole thing, they were copying each other once again. But um, the key thing, of course, is that Vulcans and Romulans are now hanging out on good old Navarre. Uh, And the key thing is, uh, which was actually quite important, they did mention it was Vulcan, not New Vulcan. So that definitely sets it in the prime timeline for those who were wondering whether it was in the prime or the Kelvin. So it's definitely the prime, which is cool the way it should be. What do you reckon? Well, look, it was very good that they did that, and and there's a lot of terminology that's been that's come up that I don't know how to pronounce half of it or or spell it. That's the worst part for me because it's all sort of brand new stuff that they've made up, which is all well and good. But again, because of the series, it's it's jumped, so it's back. So they're creating a lot of new stuff. I thought the one thing that really impressed me, and I'm trying to reference where they got the footage from, was Leonard Nimoy coming in a Spock. That was from Unification. That, I think Unification Part 2. So, yeah, uh, yeah that came that from that. That was yeah. just beautiful. Yep. That whole sequence where she's there and she sees a much, much older Spock because they live for hundreds of years. Yep. And just to see that footage of him again and then referencing Picard's yep. files and that sort of thing was good too. But I just, I love that sequence with, with that footage of him in it. It was just perfect what i liked uh is that when the discovery crew discover that romulans are now living on vulcan it's a real spin out for them because you have to sort of remember that in the discovery era we still hadn't seen romulans yet that didn't occur until the original series uh balance of terror i think it was and uh it was good as a nice realization for them to say yes you did actually miss quite a lot um in, in that entire time and it was actually set up a really nice thing and of course even though it wasn't mentioned, we know that Romulus was destroyed, which is covered off in the Picard series. Uh, and, of course, Romulus didn't have a home. So somewhere along the way in that long period, uh, they ended up on, on Vulcan. And um, that would have been a bit of an ask for both cultures, you know, the Vulcans, the logical Vulcans versus the shifty Romulans to try and get along. Just pointy ears notwithstanding, they're a completely different kettle of fish. So it's uh, <laughs> very interesting to see how that one, that would be an interesting story unto itself. So, uh, yes, very, very, very cool. I found it hard to sort of try and figure out who was who in that sort of essence. You know, you sort of had the, the guy, um, Vicar, yeah. who had different shaped ears to the girl and to the other guy on the other side. And you go, well, hang on a second, which one's which? And then you see the whole, like, the the audience, you know, you got the Discovery crew on one side and the other. It was almost like a battle royale. like two teams meet in the middle. <laughs> one, two teams enter, one team leave sort of thing. But, um, yeah, just seeing the different sort of things – for those who don't know the difference between Romulans and Vulcans, that would be very confusing. So, yeah. you know, they're both trying to, you've got the logic of the Vulcans, but the Romulans don't seem to have that, no, that no logic there, emotional, just like everyone else. Yeah, that's what causes all the conflict in the first place. And of course, for absolute purists, you'd be going, well, you've got, we're seeing Romulans, where are the Remans? But hey, let's not worry about that, shall we? Let's move on. One thing I did like, and I don't know if it was actually intentional or not, all the, the well, Navarans, if you want to call them that now, um, their pins that they were wearing that they pressed to go beaming here and there, they look very much like the Romulan logo. I was having a look with the bird, the war bird thing with the, you know, used to hold the two planets, which is Romulus and Remus. And even though it probably has changed, it looked very similar to that. And I thought that was a nice little detail. I thought that was quite cool. And I thought, oh, yeah, some people would have it, but they all seem to have it. So that was, yeah, that was actually quite, quite neat. And I do actually fact that, yeah, in the end, that there are still conflicts between the cultures. And we saw that uh, in the sequences. And I like that in their council, they've actually got a sort of a representative of each. It's not just like all Vulcans or all Romulans. It's a real mix up. And uh, yeah, that was actually very, very cool. It does make you wonder what's going on pearl navarre at the best of times um and their costumes were just absolutely awesome as yeah. well they were different they weren't just they were they could have been official robes but they just had the yep. really sort of powerful but yep. subtle sort of look to them and i thought that was very very cool as well because it did make that that logo stand out far yep. more than it normally would yeah and uh, the lady who played the president, who was the president, uh, yeah, that was like spot on schmick as. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. It looked really, really cool. And it's sort of like it really brought the show into the Star Trek universe. Suddenly, like we're dealing with cultures and races that we actually know and understand and we can relate to. Uh, and I reckon that is something that had everybody on the edge of their seats, which was very, very cool. Which, of course, then brings in Michael's mother out of absolute nowhere. It's like, oh, there you go. We've been missing you for Yonkensburgs for a thousand years. Where you been? And suddenly, ping, there she is. And uh, that was very, very good. Um, I thought they played that very, very well, actually. So uh, how would you make all that? That whole scene with her mother went, was like a... The show in itself for Michael was like an ero- emotional roller coaster. Mm. She was up and down and all over the place. You know, she's she's fallen for book. She's 
found her mother. She's seen her, her long lost half brother. You know, there's, it's just a bit of all over the place, but at the end, that whole bit where she steps up and says, yeah, I am representing the Federation and discovery. And this is what it's about. And then goes back and takes shots at her mother and says, well, you need to confirm this. Yes. And this, and this, and that. And I was like, well, hang on a second. Yeah. Maybe the council weren't impressed, but like we saw the, the Madam president, she was, so, and it was mm. very nice and subtle that her mother came in later on because she, the Madam Pre- President could have just walked up, said, here's the data and, you know, off you go sort of thing. But it was nice and subtle that she got to then spend more time with her mother later on and actually get that information. I thought, I, I must admit, I did have a bit of a laugh when at the end she, uh, Michael's given the, the disc with the information. I thought, hang on, USB sticks are a hell of a lot smaller than that these days. <laughs> <laughs> They've gotten bigger in the 32nd century, but let's not worry about that, shall we? <laughs> um, maybe there's, yeah. well, there's a hole in the middle, of it, so maybe there's a lot more information as just how they yeah. power their things. So, yeah, you're right. Um, it, like, there's a whole lot of stuff going on now regarding like the burn and as like you mentioned like SP19. It's like, oh my God, what's that? It's like suddenly all the, all the trick nerds are going, oh, there's a new name and a new code we've got to learn about that. And uh, yeah, and I did like the idea that they said the Federation got so large and it obviously became a bit cumbersome and potentially unwieldy. And of course, once the burn occurred, uh, the dolithium explosions, you know, in millions of seconds, I don't know how you can judge that, but you know, whatever. And uh, it, it sort of brought it all to its knees and uh it was good that they at least addressed that, uh, even though we're all hanging out now to find out what is SP-19, get the disc into the machine. Is that going to be the start of the next episode or they're just going to drag it out for a bit longer? But, uh, yeah, it's good that they're at least tackling it and, um, and discussing it. And the fact that it may have originated with the Vulcans or they at least know what was going on is kind of cool because after the burn, that's when they left the Federation. So they've only been gone for 100 years. So um, they uh, obviously felt a little bit on the guilty side. So who knows? There's a bit more to this story than uh, we still uh, know. So... Uh, yeah. yeah, so we'll have to see how that plays out. So the key thing of the entire episode, and so much time was spent on this, was in like the, the council discussion thing with the three representatives and Michael and her mother and all that. And it was a long time in this entire scene. And it was just like really full on, okay, no one's moving, no one's doing anything. They're just going to stand and talk. And it was like really riveting, well-written drama. And the fact that the two Romulans were going against the Vulcan guy in the middle and, you know, Michael's trying to put her case forward and her mother's turning against her and pushing her pretty hard. And I thought that was great, really sinking the boots in. I go, oh, here we go. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you disobeyed this order here and you helped kill this person there and you, you know, nicked off and this thing over there. It's like, oh, where are you going with this? And uh, I think it's kind of funny. You don't even realise that actually nothing's really happening. It's just all talking, but uh, an absolutely ingenious sequence. And, uh, yeah, one that was definitely uh, one of the best sequences of the entire series, I would have to argue. So what do you reckon? Yeah. Because it brought out all the emotion, you know, it yeah. brought up Michael stuff. So maybe she'll be able to resolve things because there was a couple of points, you know, there was the, the thing that she said when, um, you know, she needs to solve this problem of the burn and then she'll be satisfied. And it's like, well, then what? Mm. You're just going to, it's just going to be smooth sailing for the rest of your life. No, you're going to find the next problem and have to deal with that and all that sort of stuff. I also did love the fact that uh, uh, Spock would find this, Fascinating. fascinating yeah that yeah. was another fantastic yeah. sort of setback because i don't think the younger version of spock in this series actually says fascinating that often oh, i think you may as, have once or twice yeah, maybe yeah once. but not as often as no. as you know we've seen in the past no. so it was nice to sort of bring this sort of stuff back into um being an actual proper star trek episode yeah wasn't one of the coolest moments when all the delegation just beamed onto the discovery, they just go doo, 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 and they're just all there in the, in, I thought, Oh, that is grass. <laughs> that is so well. And they're still walking as they're doing it. It's like, Oh yeah, that, that's how, that I've got to mean that. That's, that's how you make an entrance. <laughs> yeah. So, so that means they could just knock out all the transporter pad, pad areas and just have either nothing yep. or to have another room, you know. Yeah, you could not, yeah, get rid of the transporters altogether and just uh, set it up as like an uh, like a holiday, you know, because that's new technology as far as the discovery people are concerned. But you are right; the uh, uh, traditional transporters are effectively uh, uh, null and void now, and don't need to. Because be, you can uh, just rock up on any one ship anywhere you want, so yep. there's no point in having a transporter room unless you need to have or have an official transported area. So you know, you just can't jump yep. into someone's. Yep. Um, bridge and then just take over the ship and all that sort of thing. But we've seen they just rock up wherever they want. Exactly right. Um, All right. So uh, I think we've sort of like pretty much uh, covered off this uh, particular episode. Is there anything else you want to add to Unification Part 3 before we give it a rating, MPS? All right. So two two last little things. It seems that uh, part of the reason why, from what I understand, 
that the burn may have occurred was because everyone seemed to be running out of dilithium. Mm. So maybe it was set up so that they had to figure out another thing or maybe because the Federation was getting too big for their boots or, or something like that. So there's still lots of unanswered questions, but we'll find that out, I'm sure, by the end of the series. We've got another few more episodes, so hopefully that gets worked out because who wants a cliffhanger that says, we almost know, and guess what? We'll see you in 12 months' time when we start that's, season that's four. That's just television for you, and don't be surprised if that actually happens. But uh, there you go. Or the, the disc is corrupted, and it takes them for five extra episodes to try and figure out what the, the code key was. Oh, now we've got it. Okay, roll credits. <laughs> anyway, the yeah. next bit. And the other bit was, I always thought Black Alert was started when they were standing still. But this time, they seemed to be flying off, and then they went to Black Alert oh, and yeah, took off. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, well, hang on a second. Does that... How does that work? Because usually they're at a stop position yeah. and black alert occurs. Yeah. Maybe with the new technology of the hands, the, the ship can just go and do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. 32nd century technology. you got to love it. You can now herb along and get into the burn all at the same time. How good is that? Anyway, give us a rating, man. P.S. What did you think of the unification part three? I actually thought this was an awesome episode and I'm giving it a four and a half. Oh! How about that? Mate, he's yeah, kicked so it upstairs. Who think that I'm, How good is that? Those who think that I'm harsh and unfair, well, there you go. Take that. So, so you're bowing to peer group pressure rather than standing on your laurels going, it was crap, I didn't like it. No, that's excellent. That's what I want to hear. No, uh, I love this episode. I think it was probably one of the best ones they've done in quite some time. I concur with that. I was actually uh, riveted the whole way through. I found the if there was any weak moments at all, it would be like, well, okay, Tilly being promoted to acting first officer. Not the way it was done, but the fact that she got picked. But everything else, the characterizations, the discussions, it was really, really like good stuff. This was quality TV. And it's almost like we've had to wait a few episodes to get to this point. Mm. But now that we're here, it's really ramping up. And I was very, very impressed. And I it's sort of setting at such a high bar that you almost think, well, the rest of the season is really going to have to struggle to sort of keep up with what they've just done with this. But I found it very engrossing and uh, I thought the characterization and a writing. And for that reason, I've got no excuse to say it's got to go the full five. Absolutely knocked it out of the ballpark. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. So it was very, very, very cool. So there you go. How good is that? So yay team from us. Trek nerds are going to be like, we're on the Christmas card list for Trek nerds. Ooh, how good is that? <laughs> anyway, but the show isn't finished yet. It's still got to continue on. And next week, well, let's hope we find out what's on that disc with the SP-19 information. It's all very exciting. So uh, you only have to wait for a few more days, which is very, very cool. And uh, for that reason, we're just going to say to you, just keep on trekking. Okay. See you next week. Okay. Bye. See ya.